This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie. The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL. However, we're the ones who've encouraged you all along to like and share them on social media and with all your friends and neighbors because at this time, each and every week, every Wednesday evening in the 6 o'clock hour, Martin County Roofing, Rudy's Health Insurance, and our brand newest sponsor, The Cartwright Firm, featuring our new weekly trivia segment called Black Facts, bring you the African-American scene every week at this time with the one and only Rudy Howard. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Always glad to be with you here on a Wednesday night. Uh, I'm going to let Cliff give you the Black Facts question for tonight. All righty, Rudy. Well, when it comes to tonight's Black Facts trivia question, here goes. Now, don't forget the Cartwright Firm specializes in car and truck accidents, personal injury cases, police misconduct, wrongful death, civil rights violations, discrimination, sports and entertainment, business litigation. Write down this number for Black Facts Trivia Contest because you'll need to text your answer to 772-349-1407. Be sure to include the, include your name, occupation, and email address to be eligible to win some cool stuff. So here's today's trivia question. And I'll give you the number again in just a moment. Who was the first African-American Nobel Peace Prize winner? It's a four different choice, multiple choice question. Out of four possible answers is A, Nelson Mandela, B, Ralph Bunch, or pronounced Bunchy, Bunch probably, uh, C, no relation to me, Desmond Tutu, and of course D, Wangari, Matai. Now, all you've got to do is uh, call the number if you know the answer, 772-349-1407. Be sure to include your name, occupation, and email address, and good luck to you. Okay, Rudy, take it away. Well, we have a new speaker of the house, Steve Scalise. Uh, well, and that's certainly better than Jim Jordan, that's for sure. Uh, Jim Jordan would have been a disaster, but at least they saw their way clear to make Steve Scalise the new Speaker of the House. Not that that's a, a giant leap forward, but better than Jim Jordan for sure. Uh, the open enrollment period for Medicare begins on October 15th. So as part of tonight's program, I will entertain any and all questions that you might have about Medicare. So if there's any question that you have about Medicare, eligibility, benefits, uh, and I represent multiple companies, and I've been doing this for more than 10 years, uh, please feel free to call me. Here's the number one and number two things that I'm going to tell you not to do, which I too often see people do. Do not, I'm going to repeat this, do not listen to your neighbors. They do not know often the specifics of what allowed them to get into the plan. Do not listen to your family members because they too may not know the specifics that allows you to get into the plan. I've had people who have gotten off plans because somebody told them that the plan they had was inadequate. And that was an absolute uh, miscarriage of justice for the person who made the decision. But they made the decision because it was either a family member or a friend. Don't do it. Don't talk to me. I'm not telling you to talk to me. But don't make a decision based on that. That's the wrong decision. Okay, so if you have questions about Medicare, that number is 340 and again, Martin County Roofing, uh, he is uh, dynamite. And if you need a new roof, uh, please, 
think about calling Derek Alcius. He's just, he's the ultimate professional and you could be assured he will do a very good job in uh, providing you with a roof that you would be very happy with. So what's my topic tonight? Other than if you want to call about Medicare, again, that number is 3401590. What is hate? I think that's an appropriate topic given the current situation that we're in. Hate is an intense hostility and aversion usually deriving from fear, anger, or a sense of injury. Let me repeat that. Intense hostility and aversion usually deriving from fear, anger, or a sense of hostility, of injury. So if there's a sense of injury, that could cause you to hate. That doesn't have to be a physical injury. That can be a mental injury. So what is a hate crime? And a hate crime is in two parts. The hate part is a bias against people or groups with specific characteristics defined by law. That's the first part of a hate crime. The crime is an assault, murder, arson, vandalism, or threats to commit such crimes, conspiring or asking another person to commit such crimes, even if, I want you to hear this carefully, even if the crime was never carried out. There are people in jail now for conspiring to commit crimes. If you are conspiring to commit a hate crime, as the lady in Texas was conspiring to kill uh, the judge in DC, and her behind is in jail, that's a crime. So all those people that say to you, what's the big deal about January 6th, nothing happened? Well, here's the big deal. There's over a thousand people that have been indicted for conspiring to overthrow our government. That's against the law. So here's the key question. And I'd be interested to hear what some of you have to say. Do you think America has a hate problem? Do you think America has a hate problem? That number is 3401590. That's 3401590. My response is, yes, we do have a problem. We have a hate problem. And that problem has been created by one of those tenets of hate. Anger or a sense of injury deriving from fear, anger, or a sense of injury. The fear part. Tucker Carlson told you over and over again <clears throat> about his great replacement theory. And that 
theory in and of itself is fraudulent because he said the theory is that they wanted to use immigrants to replace real Americans. Well, he doesn't represent real Americans. Native Americans are real Americans. But nevertheless, that uh, particular statement has permeated and seeped within the conservative mindset that that is a very real possibility. And I think it is fuel for what is causing some of our division. There's even a, uh, a, a statistic developed by the Southern Poverty, Poverty Law Center, who I'm sure most conservatives think is just completely all left-wing, that there are 193 Black hate groups in America. They advocate for separation. They oppose interracial marriage. And they would prefer to have a nation state of their own. Not a big group, but there are some out there. So, yeah, we have a little bit of that problem, too, on our side of the fence. But the problem uh, actually has been uh, growing exponentially since the election of President Obama. You can go back, and there's statistics that show you after the election of President Obama, hate groups began to grow. And, and they've grown in a different way because if you recall, there was a lawsuit, uh, I guess it was maybe 10, 12 years ago that actually bankrupt the KKK found fundamental operation. So now we have the Proud Boys and the Oath, Keeker, Oath Keepers and the Christian Right and all of these groups that have emerged as hate groups, but not under the banner of the KKK. And that is by design, but nonetheless nefarious and detrimental to us as a country. How can we, what can we do about that? I, first thing we have to do, one of the things that uh, DeSantis and, and many of his ilk feel is that we shouldn't talk about it. And somehow, if we don't talk about it, it will go away. And that's simply not the case. And I saw a, a uh, program last night where they were interviewing kids that were taking this AP African-American course. And it was in another state because that, that, that course has been outlawed in, in Florida. And the white kids in, in the uh, uh, view were talking about how valuable the information was that they was receiving out of the course. Isn't that interesting? While uh, the conservatives believe that such teachings diminishes the self-esteem of white kids, they felt the information was important. So uh, go figure. I am of the opinion, uh, especially as I saw about, as I've read about how uh, Germany has handled the, the aftermath of the Nazi uh, situation, they demand that children learn about Nazis and what they did. 
and how horrific their behavior was with the idea that it will never happen again. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. So as you're being told to not focus on that because it's detrimental to our white youth, our white youth don't see it in the same way. And I'm wondering why. And that's because they are much more open than some of you old codgers, white and black, about the state of America in 2023. They see America differently. And if you and, and in this town, which is not representative, Port St. Lucie is not representative of America, but is a unusually diverse uh, community in which kids uh, interact with each other of all types, all types. And, and the other unique thing about Port St. Lucie, they don't have any ethnic neighborhoods. There's no East Steward or, or West uh, uh, Fort Pierce. There's Port St. Lucie. Black and white kids live all over the city. There are some care areas with a little heavier minority population, but for the most part, there is no area that I'm aware of that is predominantly a minority, which makes us very unique. So kids here grew up interacting with kids of all types. So I guess that's part of what makes uh, Port St. Louis unique. And while there may be some hate here in Port St. Lucie, it is uh, minimal. Most of the difficulty in uh, Port St. Lucie comes from the division created by politics, as opposed to divisions created by race. So I think we have an opportunity to solve the hate problem, but it's gonna to have to be done by our kids. Our kids and grandkids are gonna be the ones that's really gonna ultimately fix the hate problem as we know it today. Now, let me tackle a subject that uh, I hope will not turn some of my friends against me, but it needs to be tackled. That is this current situation with Israel and Hamas. There is no doubt, I want to repeat this, there is no doubt that Israel's reaction to the horrific behavior of Hamas is justified. I fully support our government's support of Israel in, retaliate, in, in, in its retaliatory actions against Hamas for what they've done to women children and babies. There can be no excuse, no justification for those actions. But I do think it's important for you to understand because there's been some movements on college campuses in support of the Palestinians. 
and I'm going to make this statement because I, I think it's important. There has been no ethnic group that has been more supportive in helping African Americans uh, achieve some of their civil rights than Jewish people. Jewish people, while many of you may not know it, helped to form the NAACP. I have no animus whatsoever toward Jewish people. And in college, I dated a Jewish girl. So uh, whatever I'm going to say, do not take it as anti-Semitic. It is a statement about conditions that you should be aware of. What I'm going to challenge you to do, which is something that I have had to do, and all Black people have had to do, which is to separate the bad actors from the Palestinian people. Hamas may be in charge, but Hamas does not represent all the Palestinian people. They just happened to be the one that was able to secure power, even though they were a minority. That sound a little familiar to you? Um, let me keep going though. So whatever you feel about Hamas, and their horrific behavior and their barbaric conduct, please don't impute that onto the people of Palestine. That's unfair and that's in unjust. And so for the kids at Harvard who are protesting on behalf of Palestinians, the statement being made by conservatives is that they're protesting in support of Hamas. And, and I did some research on it, and that's not what they're protesting. They're protesting the conditions that uh, Palestinians have to live in on the Gaza. In uh, June of 2007, uh, Hamas executed a military takeover of Gaza. Following that takeover, the uh, Israel implemented some restrictions and the air blockade that significantly exacerbated the previous restrictions, limiting the number and specified categories of people and goods allowed in and out of the in Israel controlled crossings. Prior to 2000, up to a half million Palestinians had chosen to exit the Gaza Strip. That number has significantly reduced. As of 2022, if you are a patient that needs specialized treatment in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, that has to be approved by Israel. Only 64% of those patients seeking treatment are approved for a trip 
to Israel to receive such treatment. And quite frankly, oftentimes some of the people needing those treatments die waiting to have that trip approved. Uh, I'm going to suggest that we take a little break now. Do we have a call, Cliff? I'm, I'm going to suggest I'm going to suggest we take a little break now, and I want you just to absorb some of what I said, and I want you to understand it's so important that you're able to separate Hamas from Palestinians. It's just the same thing that I had to do separating the KKK and white folks. I'm not asking you to do anything I haven't had to do. We're going to take a little break. Cliff's going to reread the uh, trivia question. And uh, don't touch that dial because we'll be right back. And I'm waiting for your questions. 340-1590. And don't forget, you can ask me any Medicare question that you have on your mind. All righty. And uh, we're uh, returning now, of course, to our, our new weekly trivia segment called Black Facts. Presented by, sponsored by the Cartwright Firm, specializing in car and truck accidents, personal injury cases, police misconduct, wrongful death, civil rights violations, discrimination, sports and entertainment, business litigation, and more. Write down this number for Black Facts Trivia. You'll need to text your answer to 772-349-1407. That's 772-349-1407. Be sure to include your name occupation, and email address along with your answer to this question. There are four possible answers. Who was the first African-American Nobel Peace Prize winner? Was it A, Nelson Mandela, B, Ralph Bunch, C, Desmond Tutu, or D, Wangari Mathai? Remember that number, 772-349-1407. Include your name, occupation, and email address, and good luck with our weekly trivia called Black Facts, thanks to the Cartwright Firm. At Martin County Roofing, they build trust with quality work. With over 20 years of experience, they handle repairs, restoration, and new roofs for residential and commercial properties. Serving the entire Treasure Coast area, they're fully licensed, bonded, and insured, specializing in tile, metal, shingle, or flat roofs. Let them protect what matters most to you. Contact Martin County Roofing for a free estimate at www.martincountyroofing.com. Hi, this is Rudy Howard, your independent insurance agent. This means I represent multiple companies which will allow me to match you with the best company for your needs. I am now officially Rudy's Health Insurance LLC. So if you need a Medicare plan or a health plan, call me. That number is 475-8856 or my Facebook page, Rudy's Health Insurance. I am ready to serve you. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. We now return to the African-American scene with the one and only Rudy Howard. Yes. Uh, let, me, let me continue. Uh, information that I was giving you about the conditions in Gaza regarding the Palestinians. And if you're just tuning in, I want to make it clear again. It is very, very important. This is probably the most difficult thing I have ever had to talk about because I have so many good friends that are Jewish and I have a strong appreciation for Jewish people and their support for helping us obtain our freedoms and justice. But this story, this part has to be told because there's been such a uh, criticism about some of the college students who are now advocating support for Palestine, not for Hamas. Okay, this is how things get twisted out of joint. The kids are protesting on behalf of Palestine. 
Hamas is a is a disastrous, barbaric, a organization that needs all of the force that Israel can bring upon it. But the people of Palestine are going to pay a very, very heavy toll. Now, I did hear earlier, to give Israel some credit, they're trying to warn some neighborhoods that they're coming so that those people can flee. And the reason why that is, is because Hamas uses civilians as shields for some of their uh, wartime activity. Uh, so I just want to get that out there again. But, but here's some of the things that have taken place. They have restricted the amount of goods and exports to Israel. And it's been cut by like 30%. So uh, now you got a situation where uh, there is a deprivation of supplies and goods for the people of Palestine. Uh, the Israeli forces have largely restricted access to areas within 300 meters of the Gaza side of the perimeter fence with Israelis uh, several hundred meters beyond the, the deemed not safe, preventing or discouraging agricultural activities. Uh, Israel restricts access off the Gaza coast, currently only allowing fishermen to access 50% of the fishing waters allocated for the purpose under the Oslo Accords. So what was previously agreed to Israel is only allowing 50% of that. Israel, Gaza has among the highest jobless rate in the world. In the first quarter of 2022, that jobless rate was 46.6% compared to the average of 34.8% in 2006. The youth unemployment rate was 62.5%. So with the start of the blockade, conditions in Palestine have deteriorated. Again, let me repeat this because I don't want somebody after this show to say that I am trying to justify what Hamas did because I am not. What Hamas did was horrific. They deserve to be punished for what they did but the people of Palestine are gonna pay a heavy price and they're already paying a heavy price. And we got Jay on line one. Okay, how you doing, Rudy? Got okay, some Jay. Uh, some of the questions that you uh, you brought up uh, and I just wanna bring out something that probably uh, some newcomers to this area does, have no idea what was going on in Fort, Fort St. Lucie uh, and St. Lucie County when I got here. Uh, but uh, number one, 
uh, for current events, Scalise, the one now that's uh, in the House, he's the one that's been nominated to, uh, to, to be uh, the House leader. He has to go through the full House. Everybody else, the Democrats haven't voted on him yet, but they will sometime tonight. But he made a statement uh, some time ago that he said that he was David Duke with a soft with a soft touch. That's you. That's the one that wants to be the leader of the House. I, I, I you know, I vaguely remember. I forgot about that, but I vaguely but he, remember he that. Yes. David Duke. He's a David Duke fan, but he says he has a soft, soft touch. You know, in other words, he's not as uh, bombastic as David Duke, but uh, he has the same ideas the same t politics and everything else that goes with uh, being an outright racist okay so this is what we got going that's going to be running uh, running the show in the house of representative representing all the people in the united states getting back to my my experience when i moved here i was living in i was living right behind bayshore elementary when i first moved here in port st lucie in that area minding my business pay for my house Met the neighbors, and, you know, mostly all white. There wasn't too many uh, African Americans living in that area. And I would get up every morning, and I'd go out and do my little jogging like everybody else, walking and jogging, and you know, speaking to everybody, saying, "How's it going?" Well, Port St. Lucie cop stopped me. Now he got about 50 people out there walking and jogging, but he stops me. I'm the only African American in the, in that group. He stops me and asks me, "Do I live here?" Now, that sounds like East Berlin to me when I was yeah. in, in Europe. It sounds just like, like East Berlin, you know? So I'm trying to figure that out. I'm trying to figure out what, where is he coming from? What is he talking about? Do you, have any, uh, do you have any identification? I said, I don't carry my water when I'm running. I'm not in the car and I'm just out here jogging like all the other folks out here is jogging and walking. But he was incentive. He was really, uh, you know, getting a little deterred with me until a neighbor, white woman, came up to him and said, what's the problem? That's, he's a neighbor of ours. What's, what's going on, officer? And he got red in the face and everything, and he said, I'm just trying to find out, you know, I just wanted to see some ID. And she said, well, what, what did he do? Did he, is, did he violate by running with white people? And the officer looked at her, and he got back in his car. And I took down the, 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 the car number and all of that, and I gave it to the mayor, Mayor Minsky at the time. He just became mayor. I knew him personally because I helped, I helped campaign for him. And I went to his house. I didn't go to his office. I went to his house, and I talked to him, and his wife was there, and I told him what happened. He said, don't worry about it, Julius. I'll take care of that. He said, I got the number of the car and, that, and the time of day, so I said it won't be hard to figure out who it was. But he said he would. Second, the, th the second pro problem I had, not I had, but they told me when I first uh, got involved with the NAACP in St. Louis County, and I was in Fort Pierce. They told me there was a time that it was like uh, they had they had a, it was a, a, a sundown area. In other words, when the sun went down, they weren't allowed uh, to cross Virginia Avenue at night. You would allow, you had to stay in the Fort Pierce area. You couldn't go beyond Virginia Avenue. If you did, uh, you you can get in trouble. And that was the law of the land in St. Lucie County back in the day, and this is what we, you know, we, we were looking at what's going on over there. We don't have to go that far, uh, Rudy. We right here, we right here in the belly of the, belly of the, of the beast. We right here in the belly of the beast, and it's not, and, 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 and things change. I know some change, but I see it revolving back. The people seem like they're they, they going back to their old ways with the white supremacy and, one, you know, white privilege and all of that, and, uh, you know, you just got to be careful. And you have to know who you're dealing with and who you're talking to and, and what's going on. Uh, and I think it's, it's kind of atrocious. We're paying the same uh, taxes like everybody else, and we should be able to live decent without any harassment or any stupidness going on. That's my statement for today about your question. Well, thank you so much, Jay, as usual. Always a pleasure to have you. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I have seen tremendous changes in Port St. Lucie since I first moved here. I had some reluctance uh, when I was about to move here because I saw a show, I believe it was uh, Jerry Springer, where they showed the Grand Wizard uh, was here in Port St. Lucie. 
And early on in uh, Trevor's time in school, they used to run little advertisements recruiting kids and family members to to join the uh, the the clan. And uh, I I believe maybe Cliff knows this for a fact. My memory serves me. White City Park was at one time an annual gathering place for white supremacists. Uh, they had an annual event there. So, uh, but we've seen a lot, a lot of changes, and uh, yeah. this is but this is a, right. yeah, yeah. This is a very diverse, very diverse community. But anyway, thank you, Jay, so much. Appreciate okay, you. Anytime, anytime. Okay. So let 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 me continue on here. Again, let me reiterate. My information that I'm providing about Palestinians is not to be construed in any way as anti-Semitic. I am as far from anti-Semitic as you can be, but there, this information needs to be told to you because it's really important and it can help you form a an overall picture of what it's like for the Palestinians in Gaza. 31% of households in Gaza have difficulty meeting essential educational needs, such as tuition fees and books due to the lack of financial resources. And we all know black, white, yellow, or green in this country, one of the keys to uplifting oneself to a better economic status is education. And I can't believe that that would be any different in uh, Israel and the Gaza as well. Uh, so 1.3 out of 2.1 million Palestinians in Gaza require food assistance. Did you hear that? 1.3 out of the 2.1 million Palestinians require food assistance. At the current operating capacity, the Gaza power plant can only produce about 80 megawatts supplemented by 120 megawatts purchased from Israel, meeting about 50% of the electricity demand in Gaza. In 2021, rolling power outages uh, cut off homes for about 11 hours per day. 78% of pipe water in Gaza is unfit for human consumption. 78%. So why have I done this? And I did this at the risk of alienating some some very close friends of mine that are Jewish. And uh, I, I sat long and hard thinking about this before I decided to do it. But I was uh, disappointed with how the kids of Harvard were being viewed for trying to be supportive of the Palestinian people. And uh, again, Hamas is barbaric. I hope they crush them like ants, but Palestinian people are gonna get hurt. And the point is they're already hurt. 
And for all of my conservative friends, I have one particular friend who feels compromise is the bane of all evil. He even feels that compromise is what is the source of what caused October 7th, which is the horrific behavior of Hamas against the, the Jewish people. Well, friends, this crazy notion from conservatives that uh, compromise is evil is, I'm going to say it straight out, stupid and moronic. I'm going to repeat, no compromise is stupid and moronic. If you do not come to some level of compromise, there's only one solution, war. So if there can never be any compromise between Democrats and conservatives, what's the answer? The answer is what that stupid moron on Fox Gumby said, which is war. And why does he want war? I want you to listen to this very carefully because you need to catch this. He wants war because people will not adhere to his philosophy of how the government should be run. So if people in general do not adhere to his philosophy and his quote unquote statement was voting does not work then the only solution is war how stupid is that there's no compromise listen there are upwards of 5 million Palestinians in that area, there's about 2 million in the, in the Gaza Strip. How are you ever going to come to some kind of peace without some kind of compromise? There has to be compromise. After this is over, I hope better minds will prevail and they will see fit to know that there has to be some level of compromise in order to achieve some peace. You can't achieve peace without any compromise. You're going to you're going to try to bludgeon people into submission is that that's the idea. Well, we'll bludgeon you into submission. That's not going to work. I can tell you that's not going to work. Not going to work because there's people on that side that be believed just as fervently as you about their beliefs and positions. So uh, the only solution is compromise. The only way out of this after uh, Israel uh, provides a significant and with well-deserved retribution against Hamas is to come up with some compromise that allows Palestinians to have a life that is more sustainable and uh, within that realm to uh, be able to live a comfortable life. Now, I will say, and, and let me say this too, there can be no compromise with Hamas as long as Hamas's position is 
Israel does not have a right to exist. That is a, a non that is a non-starter as long as that's Hamas's position, which it is as of today, there can be no compromise with Hamas. But Hamas is a small portion of the Palestinian people. And the Palestinian people are being punished because they were unable to defeat the, the takeover of the government by Hamas. So think about that too. Think about that. The minority took over the government and it's created all of this tumult. The minority. The minority kicked out McCarthy. They represented a very small fraction of the Republican Party that was unhappy with him. But that minority kicked him out. So I hope that, as usual, I have provided you with food for thought. And as I always say, I don't expect you to agree with me. I'm just hoping like hell that I have given you information that has made you think beyond that which you had been thinking prior to listening to me on this Wednesday night. And I, if you have, then I feel I have done my job because all I want you to do is open your mind and consider the possibilities outside of your own little shell that you live in. It. So uh, I would like to thank you so much for listening to the African-American scene. And I want you to stay safe and put all your prayers for those people in Israel and the family members that are still missing and special prayers for those children that were slaughtered by those barbarians, the Hamas. God bless and be safe. And I will see you next Wednesday right here for the African-American scene. The African-American scene with Rudy Howard every Wednesday evening in the six o'clock hour presented by Martin County Roofing, Rudy's Health Insurance, and the Cartwright Firm providing us with the Black Facts Trivia weekly question. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast, webcasted to the world on Google Home, Alexa, and the TuneIn app on your smartphone. Time right now is 7 o'clock.